Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome back to part two of my beaded hair comb tutorial. In part one, I showed you how to do the bead weaving on the top of the combs. In this video, part two, I'm going to show you how to do the weaving on the top of the elastic cord. Now, part one is very important to this tutorial, so if you didn't see it, I will leave a link to part one down there in the description bar. So let's go ahead and do the weaving on the top of our combs. The first thing we need to do is pre-stretch our elastic. This is very important. I find that in anything I make with elastic, you want to stretch it out really good before you start working with it. So I'm going to go ahead and measure five feet of elastic, but I am not going to cut it. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so I took some off my spool there. I'm going to go ahead, measure five feet here on my ruler. There's four, one more is five. Okay, right here is five feet. So I'm going to give me a little bit of slack there. I'm going to wrap this back around my spool. Okay, pull that down right there in the gap. And now I'm just going to pre-stretch it. I'm not going to cut it until I've stretched it pretty good. Okay, so I just grab the end here and I pull it like that. Move my hand down, stretching it. Move my hand down about a foot and I stretch it, okay? And I just keep going doing this, prepping it so we can work with it. Stretching it. And I go back down to the beginning and I stretch it again. I do this several times before I start putting the beads on and before I cut it, okay? So I'm going to keep going, stretching out my elastic, making sure it's ready for us, and I'll be back when it's all stretched out. I'm done pre-stretching my elastic, and now I'm going to start putting it onto my comb. And what I like to do is put it through this first bicone right here. Now sometimes it's a little tricky because the elastic is floppy, so I like to use chain nose pliers or tweezers to pull it through. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it through, and I leave about a 5 or 6 inch tail, enough to finish off my piece later. Okay, now sometimes this does pull through more, so you'll have to adjust it uh, your first few rows. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my beads, and here's the thing. You do not have to use any special size bugle bead to do this. You can use whatever size you want. But basically, the whole thing is you want to be able to reach from here to the middle of the comb. And it's okay if they touch, but you don't want them to overlap like that. You do sort of want a space in between them, okay? So I'm going to start by picking up a seed bead and then a bugle. I'm not doing a, a special fancy pattern. It's just seed bead, bugle, seed bead, bugle, repeat throughout this. If you want, you can put in um, bicones in here or rondelles, but I'm just going to stay to the seed beads, okay? So I'm just stringing this, and I will be fast forwarding through the string because, well, it's very simple, but um, it's very time consuming. So to make it faster, I will fast forward through that. Okay, so I strung on six bugle beads. Everybody's probably going to need a different amount depending on what size you're using. But like I said, you just kind of want to string them on at first and see how many you need. I'm going to be going to the middle bicone bead there. So I'm thinking it's about there. So that looks good for me. I do like a little gap here in between. And as you can see, this one here, I did have a gap on it, but as I went, it did kind of shrink a little bit, and the teeth are touching on this one. This one here, I had a bigger gap when I started, and um, the gap was like this, and even though I did, you can see that they're getting closer. So you do want somewhat of a gap like this, okay? So now I'm going to find the very center bead on this comb. Let's see... Um, I have 13, I think it is, rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I have to go in through the 7th bead, and I have to go in this direction. So I'm going to take my chain nose pliers, or you can use 
um, tweezers to do this and I have to seventh bead it's this one here I have to pass this down through here and then it's gonna come out the bead and I have to catch it and pull it through just like this okay so I'm gonna pull my elastic through now I'm gonna lay this down and I'm going to pick up more beads again and like I said I will fast forward through me picking up the beads because it's going to be time consuming. Okay, so I just picked up beads again and with the first strand here I did six, so I'm going to do the same number for each strand throughout the rest of this. On the other ones, um, I think this is like a six millimeter bugle. I think I did 11 on each strand and this one, I think it was nine or 10. These were longer than the other one. Okay, so now I'm going to go like this. And I'm gonna go through this bicone. But I have to go through on the outer edge. So finding the end here, I'm gonna pass through the bicone. I'm probably gonna have to use my pliers for this. I wish I can use a needle for this elastic, but it's so thick, we need it thick, because we need it to be durable. And um, a needle won't, won't, won't work with this because when I pass through the bead, I can't get through it because it's doubled. The elastic's doubled. So, okay. So I got to make sure my tail stays long. I see that my tail has come through some, so I'm just going to pull. See, my tail is only like four inches long, so I need to pull some of the elastic through. And if you do end up when you get all the way to the other end, if one side is too long and you're having a hard time closing it up, think of this like shoelaces. You can relace this. I don't mean take the whole thing apart. I mean you would just adjust the elastic like you do your shoelaces to get it just right. Okay, so I just strung my third strand here, and now I have to go in this direction, but I have to remember that I have this um, one strand that's going this direction, so I have to go over, under, over, under. If you've ever made a lattice pie crust, you know what I'm talking about. So this strand here is overlapping this strand, and the strand I just strung needs to go underneath this one. so that it's going under this one and over here. I hope that makes sense. Here, I'll zoom in. See what I'm saying? So now I'm going to pull this a little snug and I have to take my elastic and go through the next bicone right here. So I will show you on this one here, looking at this closely, all of my strands are going over, under, over, under, over, under. It's just like a lattice pie crust. Okay, I gotta find my end here. I'm going to get my chain nose pliers and I'm going to pass this through the next bicone. I have to go through this bicone and I have to go down. So I'm going to push it down here. This can be a little tricky. Sometimes it'll take time to get through. But you'll get it, I promise. And also, um, you might have an easier time doing it with chain nose or tweezers. So figure out which is your tool to use. For me, I can do both. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and show you. So I went down that bicone there. Again, I'm going to restring. All right.
right, I have another strand complete and I have to go in this direction. And this one has to go over this strand because the one beside it is going under. So this one's over, that one's under, this one's over. Now I have to go down through the next bicone. So this bicone right here, I'm going to go down it. Continue stringing. Okay, so I just did another strand. Now, my last strand is going over this strand, so this one needs to go under it. Okay. And then I have to take this strand and go down this bicone. So I'm going in between here, going down that one. Now sometimes, I do want to say, when you uh, pass the elastic through, there might not be a big enough gap there, so you might have to open the gap up with your fingernails. There we go, and now I have to do another strand. Okay, so I just did another strand, and I don't know if I mentioned or not, but every time I put a new strand on, I just go like this, and I tug it a little bit to make sure that the last one is snug. And now I have to go, let's see, my last strand's going under this strand, so my new strand needs to go on top. And then I'm going to go down to the very next bicone. And by the way, I did get these pliers from BB Craft. I will leave a link for them down in the description bar. They're very helpful for this project. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and show you. I'm going through this bicone right here. I'm going down through it. Okay, so there we go. I just did another strand. And again, I have to pick up more beads, and I'm going to go down to the very last bicone. Okay, so here is my last strand for this side here. So, um, stretching this, I always go like this to stretch it, because if you don't, see how they like buckle and they go over each other, it's hard to see what you're doing. So the last strand I did is going over top of this strand. So the strand I just strung needs to go under this strand. Okay. And then I have to weave down through this last bicone going in this direction.
think that my beach chain wire is blocking this from coming out. So I might have to turn it. Okay, so I got through there. My bead chain wire that's going around was actually blocking it from coming out, but I did manage to go around. Just took a little bit of time, that's all. Okay. So I'll just give that a snug pull there. Pull this one snug. Okay, this is what I have so far. Looks good. I'm all right, so I'm going to string some more beads, and this is gonna be the last strand that's going in this direction. After I do this one, we're gonna be working in this direction. Okay, I just strung some more beads here, and looking at this, I can see that my last strand that I did, this one here, is going underneath this one. So that means that my next one is going to go over top of this one. Now, I'm on the last row down here, okay? So I need to start going in this direction. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my pliers. I might have to flip this. I'm going to take my elastic and I'm going to go down through this next bicone here. Okay, so I just did my last strand for the beads that are going in this direction and now my beads have to go in this direction. I'm now going to stream more beads. Okay, so I finished stringing this one here and I realized that I made a mistake. So, um, when I started this, I'm actually supposed to be having my beads come out here at the very end and I'm on the inside. So to fix this, all I have to do is just go like this, pull it out grab my pliers and turn it around. No big deal, right? So you're going to have to do the same thing because I showed you how to do it wrong. So it's an easy fix. So now I'm on the outside. I'm going to pick this up and show you. Okay. So first my beads were here on the inside. I need them to be on the outside like that. Okay. So then once you have that fixed, now we have to figure out, am I going to take my new strand and go over or under? So in order to figure this out, I have to go back and look at my first strand that's going in this direction. This is how I figured out that I messed up. So my first string, this one, is going underneath this one. So what I do is I take my tweezers, and if this one is going under this one, then the next one's going to be going over. So I go under, over, under, over, under, over, under. So my new strand is going to be going under the first strand that's going in this direction. So I like to come over here, I grab the end of my elastic, and I'm going to weave underneath. So under this one, over the next, under, over, under, over, under. And I pull my elastic through, just like that, and I'm going to pull this snug so you can see what it looks like. And there we go. So now I have to take this elastic and I have to weave down through the first bicone. Okay, so again I'm going to use my pliers and I'm going to pass my elastic down, grab it, and pull it through and I'm going to start stringing again. And again, I like to pull this snug just like that and make sure that it's just right. Okay. 
Okay, so I just strung on some more beads and now I have to figure out do I go over or under um, the next one. So in order to tell that, I look at what I just did. So the first strand, the one I just did, is going under this strand. So my, my new one is going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So I'm just doing the opposite of the strand that I did last. Okay, pull that through. And there we go. It's going to start looking really confusing because it's going to start filling up. That's why I was saying earlier that this reminds me so much of a lattice pie crust. I love doing lattice pie crust. They're really fun. But this is actually more complex than a lattice pie crust. Okay, so now I have to um, go down through the next bicone. So showing you, I'm right there. That was my last bead there. So I'm going to go down through this bicone that way. Okay, I have to get my tools here. Okay, pull that through. Again, it really helps if you tighten, straighten it up by tightening it, going like this. Okay, so again, I have to pick up more beads. Okay, so I just did another string. I'm going to take and get my tweezers again, and I have to do the opposite of what my last strand is. So my last strand is over top of this one. So my next strand is going to be under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Just like that. And I have to take and get my pliers and go down through the next bicone. So I'm going to go down through this bicone, the third one. All right, so now I'm going to keep stringing. Okay, again, I have my six bugles, and I'm ready to dive on through. So let's see, I have to get my tweezers. And my last strand that I did is going under this one. So my other one is going to do the opposite. If this one's going under, this one, my new one, is going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. Okay? And then I'm going to take my elastic and I'm going to go down to the next bicone. So I'm going to go down through this one.
Okay, I just did another strand and I have to figure out do I go over or under on this one. So looking back at this one here, this one is on top of this strand. So my new one has to be under. So again, I'm going to take my tweezers. This one's over. I'm going to go under, over, under, over, under, over, and under. through and slide my beads around okay now I have to go down to the next bicone which is this one right here going down that one so again I get my pliers and I pass my cord down Okay, so at this point, I'm just going to grab my cords and pull this here, and we can see what we got to do next. I have to pull more with my tail through there. That there's loosening up. Okay, so now I have to pick up more beads again, and then I'm going to weave through one last time. Okay, so I'm now on my very last strand, and if you look, this strand here and the one beside it are touching. That's because they're both going under, over, side by side. That's why they're touching. So once I go through with this one, they're no longer going to be doing that. So I'm going to look here. Okay, see this one's under this one, and this one's under. I'm going to take my cord, and I'm going to go over this one under this one over under over under and over and pull it through okay and now I have to take this cord and weave down through this bicon which is going to be tricky because I already have a cord there so I'm just going to real quick before I do that I'm going to straighten this out okay that's what it looks like I'm gonna zoom out because I'm really close and I'm going to go through that bicone so both of our cords will be going to the same bicone Now, I might actually back the one that's in there right now out and go through this one first because this one here that's through is kind of blocking me. So I'm going to do that. I think I did that last time. Okay. So taking that one out, I'm going to put this one through. Okay, now I'm going to go back to this one and put this one back up. Now it also helps to stretch out the elastic that we just did because it makes it thinner and so that we're able to pass through the bicone. So let's see, I'm going to need my tools. Okay, so I'm stretching this cord out and I'm going to pass through here. Okay, and there we go, we're through. 
All right, looks good. So I'm gonna clean up my mess, come back and show you how to finish this off. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys. So I'm gonna take my cords here. I'm gonna wrap them around my fingers like this so it's secure and I'm going to grab my barrette and I'm going to stretch it so now you can see what it looks like okay it's really awesome and I do think that um, it looks better with the shorter bugle beads than the longer ones I see that it is like buckling more I guess because they're longer but I did the longer ones for this one because it's faster for me to film this than it is for me to do small beads because you know more beads take time so anyways, I just wanted to point that out to you, and now we're going to finish this off here. Now, what I like to do is I like to tie one knot on each cord, and then I pass my cords back through behind the comb, and then I put the big number two crimp on, and I um, pass back through a second time, and I crimp it. Uh, this is very secure compared to just trying to tie knots and I have gone through so many different scenarios of how I could possibly finish this off and this is the only way that I can think of and it's the best most secure way so I'm stretching this out here and picking it up I'm going to hold this cord here tight okay and then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make a loop and pass through the loop twice just like this okay now I'm going to go right there in front of that seed bead and I need to pull this knot down just like that okay so I pull that tight okay let that go and now I need to do the same with my other cord and because this one's kind of tucked in here. I'm going to go like this and do it. This is a surgeon's knot. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this down and again I need to get in front of that seed bead so I'm going to slide that bead down just like that. Grab this, pull the knot down. Okay. Looks good. I love this elastic. It is the best okay now I need to weave back through here and I'm gonna bring one elastic up through this gap and one through this gap so this one here is gonna go to the second gap okay gotta make sure I'm not catching on anything and then this one's gonna go through the first one I really like how I ended up finishing this off because it's really quick. It doesn't take long at all. The most time consuming part of this is picking up the seed beads and the bugles. Okay, now I have my crimp tube here. This is a number two crimp tube and I believe this is a groovy crimp tube. It has grooves on it. See that? I think it's made by Beetalon. Okay, so I'm going to crisscross both of my ends through this crimp just like that okay and again I'm gonna pass this again because I suffer from my beaded projects falling apart paranoia so I like to reinforce and make things as strong as possible so I just loop that around and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one I might have to go like this so that the hole is open and pass through here And I'm not left-handed at all. But I managed to get it. Okay. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to adjust this. Which one do I have to pull? this. I 
fold this one and this one. Yes. Okay, pull those two. And then I pull these two. Pull them down. Okay, so I just pull these two cords tight. Just like that. Okay. And then I get my chain nose pliers and I smash my crimp. And I come in from different angles and I squish it. Okay. And all I have to do is just trim off my extra cord. And there we go. We're all done. I am so happy with how this turned out. I, I do think, though, that the smaller bugles look nicer than the longer ones. So I think these were 6 millimeter. These here are huge. They're probably 10 millimeter, maybe even 12. And I have to say, wow, this video is a lot of work, both part one and two. The time it took for me to make these and then filming it all, I've been here for a really long time today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Make sure you click the bell button so you get notified when I upload new videos. And like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made and hair accessories for my tutorials on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.